Many of you probably wonder why you didn't see a breakdown last night. Very simple answer. I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep when I came home. Just like passed out to the point where you wouldn't even know. Like what, what, what just happened? I was asleep. <laughs> so that's why I, right when I was getting there, ready to set it all up. Next thing you know, flat out. So that's why you didn't see it. But let's get to it. From the start of the game, when it was 0-0, zero, zero, I'm watching the matchups and I'm watching what's happening here. I'm watching people get lost on sets. And they should know that there's no play Boston's going to run where Tatum's going to be on the inside. He's going to always curve on the outside in the wing and normally Brown likes to find him on the wing because that's where he likes the ball on the outside he's not cutting towards the basket you're always going to pass it to him on the outside so starting the game off Miami is trying to adjust to what they're actually bringing out here on the court they have both Williams boys in the game and that is a dangerous combo because they're very physical and they very, especially Robert Williams III, he is super aggressive. Now, the picks and screens that's being set by Grant Williams is just even worse. But he doesn't set the pick this time, he just cuts through. Tatum gets the ball. And this is the problem right here. This is a bad angle to take. Tatum's going to put it on the floor and drive. Because you're too small. And he's going to take it up and score with ease. Now, it's just to start the game. But Miami, going forward, is going to have a lot of problems in this series. And I'm seeing it right away. Because you got to believe Marcus Smart will return if they do the um, game two. Hopefully, he'll be back by then. So, if he's back, you're going to have other problems on your horizon because Marcus Smart is not going to throw a lot of uh, perimeter passes that's going to get intercepted. Lazy perimeter passing and turnovers happened in this game because, one, Miami is very good at hitting the passing lanes on the perimeter. That is one of their strengths on defense, and you saw it in display all last night. Anybody threw a lazy pass, you paid. That's how they play. Now, many guys don't play 94 feet of defense anymore. They didn't really do it last night either, but when they get to that perimeter, they know to, pre to prepare for the, uh, the passes. Now, the only thing about points really is miscommunication. Like here, not knowing where to go on the switch. And number two was lost all night long. He was just having a bad night. <laughs> so here he is again. He pulls up. Gets the ball to Bam. Nope. He throws a turnover. To Grant, who throws it to Tatum. Right away, number two needs to have a seat on the bench. Because he is right now screwing up the game. So Boston is capitalizing off turnovers and the mistakes that the Miami Heat is making early in the game. That's what you have to do when your players are not in the game. But can you sustain when your players are not doing what they're supposed to do? And taking advantages of mismatches is what... Boston is good at doing. So this is a kind of a mirror match, chess match situation, except for I think Miami's a little bit more battle tested for it. Where Boston is more finesse. They're physical, but they're a lot of finesse on Boston. They need Marcus Smart on the floor. Now this is a good play by Boston. Robert Williams the third has the ball at the top of the key, which takes Bam out, out of the paint 
and all their perimeter defenders are out. Now you got this situation where Struess is out here guarding. And so on the pick and roll, now see Truck Tucker is on Tatum because he's the best guy to really get physical and stay with him. But if you roll a pick and roll, now Struess has got to guard him. And Struess is already way too far off. So by the time he catches it, he knows Struess is not in position to guard him. He looked and said, oh, Struess, pop, go right to the ground and go right to the basket. Lays it up with the left hand, ladies and gentlemen, because that is the right hand to use in that situation, is your left. Had he went with the right, he would have missed. And it's a three-point play, foul on Struess. So the game and the flow and the pattern was all following Boston. Now, Boston didn't have Al Horford, Big Al, and they didn't have... Mark is smart. Now, White did a decent job, but Brown disappeared in the second quarter. Like, he really disappeared early in this game and kind of went on an island. But Miami is grinding. Now, here's their biggest problem for my, I mean, for Boston which is going to be their problem in this series. It's not just Jimmy Butler. That's, that's to say without the least. Here's their biggest problem. You don't know how to stop that man, Tyler Hero. They don't have a guard that could stay with Tyler Hero or even pick him up. Let's watch this for an example. They're up 18 to 11, right? They got the ball. There's not a Celtic near him. The nearest guy, White, who's supposed to be guarding him, is almost at half court. He's got all of this lane to go. So look, he just gathers up speed, and look where he's at. He's at the three-point line before he even meets a defender. So he's had the time to set up, pick and roll. Now Robert Williams III is out of position to help for rebounds and defense. Now you got Bam going one-on-one. -on -one. So now he just gives it up to Bam. That's an easy lane. Now Robert Williams, I mean Grant Williams got to come over and help. And Jimmy's under the under the paint already. Bam is too athletic. Went around Brown. Easy bucket. Because no one really stopped the ball hand. Tyler Hero did this all night long. Transition baskets. You got a guard that can get shots out. Here it is. Grant Williams takes a shot. He misses. Tip. Tyler Hero gets the ball right away. Zip. Straight to Jimmy. Touchdown. Transition points. Well, the NBA is based on a couple of things. Positions, matchups, mismatches, <laughs> and the ability to step up in the clutch. Right? As we can see right here. As they collapse on Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero gets the ball. He has Grant Williams guarding him. He knows this. That's an easy shot to the lane because he's not looking at the ball. Tyler Hero can see that Brown's back is turned to him. So he can just turn on the Jets because he can get by Grant Williams. Boom. So he goes. About time Ty sees him coming. So he's thinking he's going to get a charge. So he knows 
Tice is going to step up to take the charge. So Tyler Hero will stop right there and pull up for a shot. And it goes in. Grant Williams was not in position. This is all knowing your personnel, guys trusting each other to make decisions out there on the court. Well, the thing is, is White had a hard time guarding him. That's why I said Marcus Smart is key to this game because he's going to be glued to Tyler Hero. And that's going to slow down a lot of these baskets. Jason Tatum guarding him? No. Uh, I like where your head is at, but <laughs> let, me, let me show you why you're wrong. Jason Tatum can't guard that guy. Okay, Tatum knows I got to save it for offense. I'm not going to burn myself out trying to guard that guy. Let White do that job. As you can see right now, White in a basically pick and roll situation. He just blows by him, gets to the next level. He's got dead men there. They're in a zone. You see, it, see where they're at? They're all standing on the side. They're in a zone, right? Now watch this. Look how he attacks the zone. He goes right up, puts up a shot because he knows he has a smaller guy who's probably not going to jump. He's got the advantage, and he gets the bounce. So he just gets to the next level. But Tatum is not going to burn himself out trying to guard Tyler Hero. He's got to be the guy able to score the points. <laughs> now, he'll come over and help in a situation, but he can't guard that guy 94 feet. Prime example. You see this? He's being defended. Tyler Hero. Here comes Tatum, who's supposed to be guarding Bam, right? He rushes to the double. Bang. Pokes the ball out. Gets the ball. Takes off. And scores. That's a great defensive move by Tatum. Knowing the situation. Reading the situation. And moving from there. Great play to recognize it defensively and get there and just rush the ball handler. You have to take risks in this game. Again, here's a big problem. Turnovers for Boston. Pritchard is a great shooter. Short, but can shoot. But if you make him put the ball on the ground and have to make basketball decisions, making passes on the run, that plays in the hands of Miami. But this is a great defensive play by Boston. He goes up and gets the block. That's a clean block. That was genius. Tatum gets Bam to back up just enough so he can get that shot up. Block. Goes back to Tatum, who throws the alley-oop for Robert Williams the third. Hustle, baby. Hustle. Robert Williams the third gassed out. He gassed out tremendously. And when she gassed out, it was basically all she wrote for the rest of the team. So... You start seeing things started to uh, break down as far as the rest of the team. Um, but overall, man, I thought it was a tremendous effort by the Miami Heat to get back in this. They got real lucky tonight.
because they could have easily lost this game the way it was going. Boston had the momentum, but just like they do, they find a way to blow leads. It's incredible. Here's Bam making a turnover, trying to go out for a three instead of taking the two. This is Miami's problem they're going to have to look out for. Dumb decisions down the stretch. Brown gets away with a double dribble and lays it up. This unit was bad for Miami. Uh, Olin Depot, I know he's still trying to work himself back in, but this this unit was bad last night in the first half. Having the three guard rotation going all the way small was not healthy for the team. Pritchard gets the ball. Watch how they trust each other. Tatum gets it. He's dribbling. He knows he's going to get the attention. Pump fakes enough just to give it to Pritchard, who shoots from deep. And that's what he does. He can shoot. And right now, they're rolling off transition. Right now, they get a rebound, transition, breakout, Pritchard layup. A missed layup on one end ends up to a layup on the other side. Transition. They're killing Miami. Left hand. Got to develop a left hand, people. And that's what makes Tatum special. He's developed his offhand to where his offhand is a, just as much as a weapon. And I've seen more players in the NBA now who are at what they call superstar level. And these guys don't have a left hand. They don't. They can't finish what they left. They on that position, on that side, and they're finishing with their right. I've watched the Indiana Pacers lose to the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron because <sighs> Victor Olin Depot didn't finish with his left hand. Would have made it a four point game and the game was over. But he didn't do that. Well, Tatum was killing, man. Boston was, was definitely putting them boys in the blender. But the way you get back into the game is grind like breaks. So, like I said, it's going to come down to who wants it more, who got more dog in them. And Miami got a lot of dog in them. Boston don't. They're more finesse. They play a team that's rugged, but they're not. A finesse team. And this is where Tyler Hero, I mean, not Tyler Hero, but Marcus Smart is definitely missed. White distributing the ball. Look at that. Lazy bounce pass. You can't throw those against Miami. Gone. Cookies, gone. You can't do that. <laughs> and think you're going to win an NBA championship. You're going to have to get Marcus Smart out here immediately. But you cannot throw those passes against Miami. Well, Miami's strategy is just keep it within 10. Keep it within reason. We can come back and do the rest.
Uh, well, the third quarter, Boston came in. They, I guess they were still sleeping. I guess they took a nap at halftime <laughs> in the third quarter. Miami jumped them from the beginning of the of the quarter, and they just got caught off guard. <laughs> they got caught off guard, baby. Their energy level was so laxed coming out the halftime. They're not matched with Miami's energy. Now, number two never hit a bigger shot in the game. His only big shot in this game is when he pulled up a three right there and it went in. I said, all right, here comes a run. Now, everybody's still in the bathroom and getting concessions. They ain't even back in their seats yet. Now, here's Tatum with a ridiculous pass going all the way to Robert Williams. In this game, they decided to play zone and guard the paint. So Robert Williams, they're not, they're not worried about Grant Williams getting the ball down here. This is a terrible play by Boston. No one's going to buy that. So <laughs> they're all guarding the paint because they know that's where it's going. Nobody is ever worried about Grant Williams getting the ball over there in the corner. So they throw the ball in, Struess, and everyone's there to help, to disrupt the pass. They doubling Robert Williams to get the ball. They know that's where you want to go. We've seen that in the first half. It ain't going down now. Number two pulls up again, misses. Jimmy gets it, goes back up. Junkyard dog plays. Miami get the ball again. Struess. And if Struess get hot, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Miami Heat is not a team you can give any momentum. If you give that team any momentum, you're done. If you get a Miami Heat a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, you lost. Boston hit two shots in the third quarter. I have never seen a team do that. They hit two field goals in the third quarter. I kid you not. It was the worst I've ever seen anybody play in a third quarter in probably basketball history. I, I don't I can't remember a quarter in the playoffs I've ever seen that. A team only hit two shots. That's ridiculous. <laughs> By all standards, that's just plain ridiculous. That just don't happen. Now, look at this play. Jimmy gets the ball right here, right? Pulls up. Bang. Knocks the shot down. The run is in position. Look at this. Struess reaches in, helps Bam out. Why? Because they're not worried about Grant Williams being a threat at the three-point line. No one's worried about him, so Struess is going to be the doubler. Steal the ball from Tatum. Here they come. I have no idea. <laughs> and I love this play by Jimmy. Watch what Jimmy does. Which makes this play golden. Look at that. Struess is playing way off Grant Williams. They know they ain't finna throw the ball to Grant Williams. So now he snatches the ball. Watch, watch what Jimmy Butler does. Grant Williams on the hustle, right? Watch what Jimmy does. Jimmy gets there and slows Grant Williams up and just slows down. Gets in his way, slows him down. Grant Williams on the floor. Struz gets a dunk. <laughs> Once again, Grant Williams in the corner. Tatum throws a lazy pass over to Brown. And this is where their problem is. Jimmy shoots the gap. There it is. Touchdown. 
Tatum again. Lazy pass to Robert Williams. At the, I don't know why, but there it is again. They need Marcus Smart. <laughs> they need Marcus Smart. The game, you would thought, okay, this game's over. Boston in this third quarter. Boston in this third quarter did so much to try to lose this game. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Pritchard was keeping them in it. Pritchard and Brown was keeping them in there with late shooting, but <laughs> too much Jimmy, too much Struess <laughs> down the stretch, and it was like I, we we can't get away. Every time they would hit a big shot, Boston hit a big three. Miami would come down and match it. Uh, P.J. Tucker hit a three, Truck Tucker. Yeah, then uh, what's his name? Kane Al Brown hit a three. It was going back and forth with like threes. Struess came down and <coughs> was just on fire. And it was like, can Boston keep this up? Can they match this pace? If they hit like both of them were hitting threes going back and forth. Three, 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 three. And Struess was my guy. He was just lights out in the fourth quarter. So there's some adjustments to be made on both sides of the of the equation. But Marcus Smart definitely makes it a different game. Because I don't know if Jimmy could put up another 40 burger, but Miami's lucky to get this one. So that's my take on it. Hopefully, you guys uh, Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, like the game and you're going to stick around for game two. Tell me who you think going to win the series in the comment section. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the page. It's your boy Carcino for life. I am out. Uh, the Patreon is going to be cracking today. I already know. So, yeah, we will be updating it today. So get ready. <laughs> I can't wait.